Today we're covering income statements. Income makes us happy, especially when we have more income than outcome. So let's dive in. So what are income statements? In accounting, they're sometimes referred to as profit and loss. Sometimes you'll hear revenue and expenses. And in reality, an income statement is kind of like a budget. It's just slightly different, but it's very, very close to a budget in personal finance of the, the money that's coming in and the money that's going out the door in the form of revenue and expenses. Now, I've provided some links below with information on income statements and what you need to know. So you need to know what is on an income statement as far as revenue and expenses go. And first, in terms of revenue and personal finance, we usually call that disposable income, or rather income after you pay your taxes. And so that's the initial income coming through the door, since taxes generally have already been deducted if you are a, a salaried wage earner. And the equation, just like there was an equation for a balance sheet, the equation for an income statement is revenue minus expenses. Well, then what's left over for revenue minus expenses? Well, we call that net income or a budget surplus or a net loss if it's a negative number. And we call that a budget deficit. When revenue exceeds expenses, it's a surplus or net income. When expenses exceed revenue, that's a net loss or a budget deficit. So what is revenue? Simply put, it's what you make. And we'll provide more details on that later. Expenses are, is essentially what you spend, plus a, a little bit else. So how does net income affect your net worth? Well, your net income simply adds to, or if it's a net loss, it'll subtract from, your net worth. So if my net worth is $10,000 and my net income during, say, a month is $1,000, my net worth at the end of the month is $11,000. Now on the income statement, there are three primary ways to raise revenue. They are to sell your labor as an employee, to rent your money, gain interest or your investments, or to serve a customer. We tend to call that entrepreneurship. If you think through a few examples, to sell your labor, you could be a salaried employee. You go to work every day and you sell your time in exchange for money. If you have assets, you could rent your money, say by buying a bond and lending that money out. Third, you could serve a customer in terms of maybe putting your house on something like Airbnb and renting, that ho renting out your house and finding customers to serve in that way. Now, if you remember from the balance sheet, this concept of liquidity is an important concept. And it, really what it means is access to cash, how easily you could transfer something, say an asset, into, into cash. So it's, it's an important concept to remember for both the income statement side and the balance sheet side. But let's walk through a quick scenario. Let's say you don't have enough cash to pay rent. What could you do? Well, you could say borrow money. Maybe you could, if you have a student loan, you could increase that student loan potentially and borrow the money. You could sell assets. So you could sell your TV to have enough money in order to pay your rent. You could increase income by getting a temp job. Potentially, you could also reduce your costs. Now you could go on a freegan diet for the rest of the month. Now, for those of you not in the know, a freegan diet is when you only eat food that is free. I hear it's popular with college students sometimes. Now, what we could do with each one of these situations is that we could walk through our financial statements, our balance sheet and income statement. So let's say we borrow on a student loan. What happens? We increase our liabilities, our student loan. We increase our assets, which is cash, and then we decrease our cash, decrease our assets, in order to pay off or have an expense on our rent. Or what about sell assets? You, you have a TV, which is an asset. You sell that TV in exchange for cash, which is another asset. 
and then you sell and then you use that cash in order to pay your rent uh, increase income you get a temp job so you get a temp job you receive income in the form of revenue and that when that cash comes in it becomes an asset and then you decrease that cash and you spend that money in the form of an expense on your rent or you could just simply reduce your costs so reduce your expenses over the next few weeks for the rest of the month and in turn you should have enough assets in order to pay for your expenses so these are just a few exercises of walking through that you should be comfortable with of going through a financial statement and which is something you'll need to do for project two now what i like about income statements in personal finance is that it shocks people initially when they start keeping a budget when they start tracking the income statement it initially shocks them and you should be moving right along in your project six and and tracking your expenses for a few select categories and i want you to pause and reflect what have you noticed so far keeping your budget or what have you experienced already what have you noticed about budgeting in the past for yourself or others so how has this experienced kind of clashed with your expectations or fulfilled your expectations and how are things going this time and how is it different than before now let's get to one of the hardest sections as far as the income statement goes and that's with depreciation so depreciation is an expense and the nature of especially physical objects over time say your car is that it tends to be worth less over time so let's say it's worth five thousand dollars a year ago it's worth four thousand dollars today well, in a sense, you've lost a thousand dollars, or you've had a thousand dollar expense. And so it's very difficult for people to account for depreciation because you're not actually spending that cash. It's not coming out of your wallet. You're not seeing it every single month. You have to be aware of what your assets are worth in order to know how much your depreciation expense is. And so an income statement isn't just exactly a budget on what you earned or consumed it also it also includes things where no cash was actually transferred like in our depreciation example but the benefit if you take into account depreciation and we'll, we'll talk about amortization then your budget starts to look far less lumpy let's say you buy a car for five thousand dollars is that a five thousand dollar expense well no because there's still some value there but if you take into account your monthly depreciation, you actually have a really good idea of, of what your, your, your typical kind of monthly spending looks like once everything is included. So what are some examples of this? Well, you know, cars, that's what we've kind of already discussed with depreciation. Um, a home could potentially depreciate over time as well as things get beat up and you need to fix them. If you do not fix things in a house, it could depreciate over time. There's also this concept of amortization. And so with amortization, let's say you pay your car insurance and you pay six months worth of car insurance and say you spend $600 to keep it round. So in a way, it's $600 for six months of car insurance. And so that's essentially $100 every single month. But you have to prepay your insurance. And so if you're three months in, you still have $300 of insurance left. And so it's like you have an asset of $300. So this is if you amortize at $100 every single month and have that in the back of your mind, at least, even if you're not tracking it on an income statement, it will be a lot easier for you to understand where your expenses are going and to understand, say, your actual net worth and your financial position. So the question to keep in mind is, if I sold it today, what would it be worth? If you were to sell a car and there, was, there were three months left of insurance that you had prepaid on it, the insurance company would need to pay you those three months. So that's the question to keep in mind with depreciation and amortization. And of course, there's this question of appreciation. What if something goes up in value? Now, cars generally do not do that, but say a house could. Well, this is like the reverse of depreciation. And what is it? This is capital appreciation. And it's, this is 
essentially a form of revenue for you instead of expense. All right, enough of that dry stuff. We're going to talk about some budgeting approaches and budgeting methods that, that people use, what's currently popular and kind of out there. And I wanted to start with one budgeting method, which I like to call life lesson number 87. And it's if you don't want to worry about money, then don't spend it. Ha ha, okay. But some people's method of budgeting is essentially, we have a vague idea of how much money is coming in in revenue, and we have a vague idea of how much money is going out in expenses, and we just try to make sure that that vague idea number is much less than the other one, and things tend to work out. Now, this might not be the optimal budgeting method, but quite a few people do just fine with this method, as long as their vague ideas are not totally vague and they, they do have some idea. Now, if you are going to tr be tracking things, you need to track your revenue and your expenses. So revenue can be just as tricky as expenses for a lot of people. I mean, revenue could come in in a very lumpy way, let's say, where you receive a lot at one time and then less at other times. It can get pretty tricky. And people take different approaches with, for different budgeting methods. And I think one of the key takeaways with the different budgeting methods is that there's a lot of things that are out there that you could consider. And a lot of people find success with each one of those methods. Now, one of those methods is one that was made popular by Dave Ramsey, which was to switch everything to cash and to focus on self-control. Now, we're going to create a budget and we're going to make it in cash and we're going to put it into different envelopes. And that way, when there's no more cash in that envelope, you just can't spend anymore. And it tends to perform very well with people who have found that they lack a certain amount of self-control when it comes to budgeting. And this has worked very, very well for them. There are other people who use, say, Mint, YAB, Excel, or these this this back of the mind analytical approach where it's not like you're going to look in an envelope to see if you have enough money, but rather that you're, you're tracking this over time to make sure that you're on track or you're off track of your budgeting goals. And so for others, this is the best way because it's relatively straightforward, relatively easy. Maybe it could be even a little bit of fun, kind of gamify it. And so which method should you be choosing? This is kind of two different approaches, but there are a number of other approaches that are out there. So which method should you be using? Well, it's whatever works for you. There are different benefits to different methods. And so as you get to know yourself better, as you do budgeting, you can explore the different budgeting options that are out there, and you can select the one that fits the best for your financial goals in order to fulfill your your personal, your lifelong goals. All right. Now that we've covered a balance sheet and income statements, you are ready to start tackling project two. So there's a link below for an exercise. And what you need to do, you're going to be classifying the impact of events in your life. You're going to be assigned some random events and you need to show how each one of those events individually affect your balance sheet and your income statement, and then show how your net worth has changed over that period, over that month, let's say. Now, a couple things to remember. Some events do not have any effect whatsoever because things happen in life and they don't affect our financial statement always. Some events merely shift, say, from one asset to another, maybe a liability to a different liability. So in the very general balance sheet and in income statement sense, there's no change. And the last thing to consider for this exercise is you should remember to consider uh, gifts as revenue. So good luck on that. You can do it.